Letters from the Front, Part 13, by CZS 5056. 23 Winter, 785. Dearest Father, I never knew how exciting life out on the front could be here on Derger. Just the other day, I saw a human communications officer who was sent over just to repair the satellite dish they installed long ago. It was the first time any of us kins had seen a human. He looked at us, as if we were just another part of his day, and seeing Nerez was so uneventful for him that we didn't get a second look, until he discovered they gave him the wrong parts to fix the satellite dish. I know I'm just part of the kin case, but just seeing him made me think that maybe I should try to save my pay and move to Earth when this is all over. The human called himself Stu. Stu was talking with us for a while, while he waited for a replacement part to come, since they apparently sent him with the wrong piece. The things he said when he talked about his home in Tokyo, about how every human is able to make their way in life regardless of their parentage, and how there are no case that everyone is with until death. He also talked about how before the war, he was just a factory laborer, but has since come to love communications and satellite work, and will try to work in that field after the war. The little noble case officers were not too thrilled with us talking with Stu, saying that if we talk to him, he will corrupt our ideals and give us thoughts that are too complex for our minds to handle. Although I wonder, if the Littles are where they are just because they have wealth, and us kins are where we are because we don't have wealth, is our system able to survive this war? I have sent you what part of my pay I do not need to immediately survive, and all I ask is that you save it, and see if it is able to grow, so that I can take you with me to Earth when it is over. How are Mother and Pharaoh? I haven't seen her since leaving for training. I do hope to marry her upon my return from the war, and take her with me to Earth. I do think that I will miss Nero though when we leave. I know I will miss the blue mountains that we see from the house and complex roof, and the sights of the farmers bringing their gurk to the slaughterhouses at night on 148th Street, and the smell of the fishermen bringing in their daily catches at the docks. Forever yours, Biso, 3rd grade enlisted infantryman, 1st Company Nera Surface Defense Force. Part 14 32 Finn, 9737 Dear Mom, I cannot believe that tomorrow is the new year, and this will be the first time I'm not going to be celebrating with my biological family. The new family I have here, forged in the blood that we shed together, is not anything like I ever thought was possible. I feel closer to them in some ways than I do to everyone at home. Sorry, Mom. I think it might have something to do with the things we have seen and done here together. Yesterday, while in the front trenches on Dare Jair, an agent Tagen came crawling into our trench from no man's land, saying that he escaped from a human prison stockade while waiting for our transport to a prison camp. We offered him water and what little we had from our ration tins and called for a medic. He was hurt very badly, with what was clearly blood on his fur from the human razor wire and gashes on his leg and beak from the shells that always go off. We didn't know if it was our shells or theirs that caused the damage. He kept talking about restoring his family honor with his escape and how he will soon be in Jerala. Whatever that means. We tried to ask what he was talking about, but he just kept repeating, I'll be in Jerala. Honor to my family is restored. And he was dead within minutes. The medic arrived shortly after, but we had to leave him there until nightfall, so we could climb out and bury his corpse in the cover of darkness. By then, he was ambient temperature and stiff. We did not get much sleep that night. To make the night worse, at around 0100 local time, a small raiding party of humans came into our trench in Tokiawi, our sentry for the night. I don't mean they came over and killed him. I mean they just straight up took him, like it was a shovel. I thought humans couldn't see in the dark like the other sentient races. But either they just kept it a secret from everyone, or they have some gizmo that lets them see in absolute darkness. We heard Yowie's cries for help getting softer as he was carried away, but we couldn't see where he was going. And at sunrise, we found his guard post empty with a human finger in it. I guess I could take some comfort in knowing that at least Yowie took a finger for his abduction. I wish I was home and safe from the shells and the human devils we could see in the dark. Although I do admit that after this point I wouldn't know what to do with my time, since working in Dad's shop would seem incredibly dull after everything I've done here. Although I suppose I might try to become a peacemaker in the city and bring the criminals to justice. Zar can work in Dad's shop. I have to get moving now. Since Yao's abduction, we now need extra sentries. And I'll give you three guesses as to who is on tonight's watch. Your loving son... Junior enlisted 2nd class, Norco, 101st Infantry Regiment, Orc Army.